Zach Parrish. I'm going to give a, a quick overview today over how to teach programming to students by way of Blueprint. Uh, now, if you're unfamiliar with Blueprint, you should get to know it really quick. It's our visual scripting system that we have embedded inside of it before. I'll talk more about it for the next few minutes. But first, a couple words about me. So I'm a tech artist at Epic, and as Ryan just got done explaining, that actually means a whole lot of things. Uh, in my case, it means I spend a lot of time in Blueprint. I am not an engineer. I can dabble in C++ code. I did ship code in Paragon. It crashed the build, and the entire building came down and yelled at me for it. <laughs> and, and straight up, the first word that was uttered was, what the hell are you doing checking code in? It was great, but, but I learned a lot. I have a background in 3D animation uh, and teaching. So I've taught in brick and mortar facilities. I've also taught uh, online via training videos. And I've taught scripting to a lot of people. Uh, two to four month long uh, scripting and programming classes in Mel and a little bit of uh, C-Sharp and C++. I know how stressful programming is the first time you learn it. The very first programming class I ever took brought me to tears. The teacher actually had to take me out in the hall and tell me it was going to be okay. I was crying like a very small child. It was rough. So this is what Blueprint looks like, or kind of a sample of it. it actually, this is actually one of the nicer scripts that I have. Uh, I, I chose a very, very, very clean one for this picture. So let's talk a little bit about Blueprint at the conceptual level. So first off, Blueprint is programming. I've heard folks say otherwise, like, oh, but it's visual scripting, it's not real programming. They're wrong. They're completely wrong. Blueprint is programming in a theater sense because you're really just focusing on how the program works. Uh, it's a compiled visual scripting language. Don't worry about the compiling bit, it's very fast. In most cases, I'm waiting fractions of a second for a compile as opposed to multiple minutes for a program to compile in the language. Uh, it's completely embedded inside of UE4. There's no IDE or fun stuff like that. Uh, it works by users stringing together nodes and connections. You just have a bunch of wires, as you saw on the previous slide, and you essentially program with Lego brick. You have nodes which do things, you connect them together in a string, and you make something happen. Uh, it contains a lot of the same features as a regular uh, class-based scripting language, so if you know how those work, you already know a lot about Blueprint. And just kind of as an aside, it's based on a lot of the fundamental code that Unreal Script was back in the Unreal Engine regions. So if you're unfamiliar with Unreal Script, it was a programming or a scripting language that lived entirely inside of UV3. And we removed that and went straight with uh, C++ for all uh, traditional programming, but the heart of Unreal Script lives on uh, in Blueprint. So why does Blueprint exist? At Epic, we have a lot of engineers, like hundreds of engineers working on different things. Uh, but we also have a huge artist and designer base, and the artists are often uh, the creative folks. They come up with how things should work, and the engineers are the ones who can make that happen. So if you can't read the cheesy cartoon on the side, we have, like, on the left we have an artist who's sitting there with this beautiful drawing saying, hey, please do something, jump, live, and you have your engineer who's looking, saying, look at my beautiful squares and boxes and how they run and jump and do things. And that's kind of the constant conundrum. So Blueprint is designed to bridge that gap. It makes programming appeal to folks who are more visually oriented, who, uh, like me, who look at an IDE like a blank sheet of paper and have no idea what they're supposed to type onto it to make something happen. Uh, it also it, it gives tools to the people who need them the most to, to prototype whatever they need. Now over time, we've noticed that Blueprint developers start to think and talk like traditional programmers. We've seen this in Epic, we've seen this in professional studios, and in classrooms. Uh, over time, as you, as you really start to understand how Blueprint does what it does, you're making a lot of the same decisions that you would make as a traditional programmer, and programmers and Blueprint artists will start speaking the same language to each other and, uh, and working together much more quickly. Now, the evolution of Blueprint has brought uh, the fundamental concepts of programming, things like class-oriented structures, uh, to people who thought they could never program. Uh, it, by, it does this by removing the intimidation factor of programming. The real challenge of teaching programming to somebody is that you're trying to handle a lot of problems uh, at once. You've got to teach somebody the syntax of programming, exactly what they're supposed to write. Uh, then you've got to teach them logic, sometimes for the very first time in their life. Uh, Blueprint separates all of that. You can just focus on the way programs work and worry about the syntax a little bit later. And it's generally more fun. Uh, IDEs are boring. It's fast. Uh, no, I, I kind of covered this a second ago, but the idea of programming being a, a strain happens like when 
when you have students who are learning programming sometimes for the first time in their lives, logic is scary. The very first time you try to understand logic at the core level, and you start getting into chain logic, and if this is greater than that, and this, and these other things are true too, then some other stuff can happen. And trying to teach that to somebody who's never been exposed to it before, and also trying to let them understand that if they miss a semicolon, nothing will work. <laughs> or try to explain a race condition to somebody who's never programmed before, right? They're, you can just watch their eyes glaze over, and it will scare people, and it will scare students away. Uh, so having taught scripting classes, I've been in the situation where you do, uh, it, was, it was deja vu, like I had to pull the student aside and say, no, it's okay, you're getting this, I know it's a lot, I know it's overwhelming. And Blueprint saves folks from that by allowing them to just focus on the fundamentals of how things work. So the ability to visualize the, the way programs are actually flowing by way of Blueprint helps students make these massive leaps. Like they can actually see how data flows. This event happens, these functions are called, then we, uh, we measure some amount of data and something happens in response. And you can actually see that take place inside of Blueprint. We'll take a look at some of the features that make that possible uh, in just a moment. So rarely do programming courses, at least the ones that I've been to, the books that I've read, uh, the ones that I've taught, rarely do they ever start off immediately in an IDE. You don't take your very first level programmers who've never seen a program before and open up the Jewel Studio and say, okay, now we're going to program, because it's a little scary. The first thing you do is you draw out that first program, right? You, you create a flowchart to show them how a program actually works. Well, what if that flowchart just was your program? That's the heart of Blueprint. You design a flowchart, and that flowchart defines what your program is doing. So let's talk a little bit about some of the features of Blueprint. Uh, so it's an object-oriented language, has all of the benefits and drawbacks to being object-oriented. It does allow students to build class structures so they know how to start with the generic and go more uh, silly specific. Uh, it's a type language, so you have data types, all of the standard ones you're used to in any programming or scripting language. You, it also has object types. It has flow control, so all everything that you're used to, uh, ifs, loops, uh, flip-flops, anything that you need to write, you can either write your own uh, flow control nodes if you need to do that. In fact, uh, the loop node inside of Blueprint is just a macro. You can double-click it, you can see how it works, and you can change it if you want to. Uh, one of the first things I did when I started playing with Blueprint was open that up and I added a delay into the loop and promptly got yelled at by a programmer. It's apparently you should never do that. It worked though. It totally worked. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it. So uh, it also includes support for arrays, sets, and maps. Uh, you can write functions inside of it with your own uh, inputs and outputs. So you can show students exactly how a function brings in data, manipulates the data. You can, you can see the output, you can visualize the whole thing. And this function, is it, I have a laser here? Oh my god, I have a laser, it's awesome. So like, in this case, like, your function would define something that's happening to data and you have your output. And then outside of that, in your base script, that's just a single node. And at any point, your students can see, oh look, we're just calling this one function. If they want to, they can double click that function, jump in, and see exactly what the data is doing. And it becomes this awesome visualization structure for them to see how these programs work. And that's exactly the same way a function works in any language. It also uh, supports class-to-class -class communication. So you can uh, have one class cast to another and, and make changes, call functionality on other classes. Uh, we have support for delegates or something like, they're called event dispatchers, but it's the same thing. We also have a constructor-like apparatus, the construction script, which is perfect for showing students how uh, procedural construction or procedural programming works. Uh, so like in this simple example, we have a single blueprint that's creating an array of chairs, uh, just based on a given number of chairs that you need within a space. Uh, blueprint also offers context sensitivity. One of the hardest things about learning any language, whether it's for scripting, programming, or anything, is just knowing what you can and can't do. Uh, so Blueprint tries to help you out as you are dragging wires out to create your nodes, it has a, uh, a context-sensitive layer that tries to guide you toward the next thing you're going to create. Like in this case, uh, I was dragging the wire off of the string variable, and Blueprint was immediately like, you're working with a string, so here's the types of things you should be doing with a string. And occasionally you can turn that off and do terrible things if you want to. So uh, how does Blueprint actually help you as a teacher? First off, it's super fast. Uh, you don't have to worry about compilation times, uh, it's, for the most part, for most things that you'll be building, it's compile, done, and go ahead and start using it. It makes the logistics of teaching much easier, as we've kind of already covered. You can just focus on how the programs work, how they do what they do, uh, the logic base of it all, and then worry about syntax later on. 
Uh, anyone can get their hands on the rules report completely free. That's a huge boon uh, when you're trying to get students to study stuff at home because anything super technical, you can't just learn in the classroom. You've got to take that home. You've got to use it on your own time. And UV4 is free and it'll run on most hardware. So as long as they have uh, some sort of PC or Mac at home, they're probably going to be just fine. Uh, it's much easier, uh, at least in my, in my experience, I find it's much easier to capture the attention and imagination of folks if you don't show them something like an IDE. Uh, I'm sure there's, uh, there are people in the room who think Visual Studio is really exciting and amazing. I'm not one of those people. I do like, I like the dark scheme of it, but that's why. <laughs> so, uh, the, but the, the key point is that Blueprint allows students to get that fundamental understanding in place. And only after they really understand how their programs are working inside Blueprint, then they can start layering on uh, the syntax of whatever language they'd like to pick up next. <laughs> and even Blueprint's uh, editor, like the, the place where you build your Blueprint scripts, is there to kind of help you make those leaps into becoming a programmer. So this is a picture of uh, the uh, Blueprint Editor, and we've got the uh, component list and uh, the My Blueprint panel over here. This is all of the different variables that you've created. And then we have the script proper, where you've connected all your nodes. And this is analogous to the .h file and the .cpp file in a standard uh, C++ program. So you, you have tools that you can start making connections to uh, to help students understand what they're doing when they eventually make it over to code. So let's talk about some of the features that Blueprint um, also has just to kind of show students how things work. Uh, so we have some debugging features. The wires in a Blueprint actually illuminate while you're uh, executing. So you can open up a Blueprint window. It works better if you have two monitors because then you can watch it do its thing in the view and you can watch the Blueprint graph. But uh, the wires will illuminate. If you have a really complex script, uh, you can watch the decisions all kind of move through the network. It's very interesting. You can also place breakpoints on any given node, and uh, when you hit those breakpoints, just like in code, execution will stop. It'll open up the Blueprint Editor and take you right to that node, at which point you can mouse over any of the inputs or outputs on the nodes and see what the data going into and out of is. So you can uh, quickly analyze exactly what's going on in your program at that time. You can step through one execution at a time if you need to, just like you can in code. Uh, values can be watched in Blueprint, so you can right-click on any node input or output and tell it to watch, and then as you execute, you can watch the data uh, continue to change. So like in this case, we are watching the playback time of a node, and as the game was playing, it's actually reporting how many seconds it's been executing. Now, as you add breakpoints and watch values to your graphs, all of that is brought together into a single location uh, called the debug panel. So if you want, you can open that up and you can keep track of everything that's happening inside your blueprint. So in this case, I have a blueprint that's executing and it's actually saying how long each node inside of that blueprint has been firing off. So it's, uh, again, just kind of a nice teaching tool uh, to show students how their scripts are working. Any property in blueprint can be quickly logged. Uh, so those print strings, those hello worlds, those types of things when you're just trying to understand how something works are super important. It's very easy to log stuff out in Blueprint, so it's, it's really just a single node for logging uh, that has an option for would you like to log something directly to the screen so people can see it, or do you want to dump it into a log so that you can read it later, and this is just an example of, of both of those. You can also use reroute and comment nodes. So uh, I, I tried to find a picture of one of my cleaner, nicer networks, because mine tend to get pretty nasty over time, but you have the ability to create comment boxes that surround an entire collection of nodes and say exactly what, they, what that group of nodes does. Uh, it also kind of works like a container where if you move that comment box around, all of the nodes in it come along automatically, so it's almost like building your own organizational system. You can uh, also reroute the wires to go in any uh, configuration that you want, so if you've got to do something kind of crazy, you can, you can make your graph pretty, which is important because it makes everything easier to read. So once, uh, I guess the, the question after this is like, where do you go from here? Once somebody really understands Blueprint, what comes afterward? So once uh, students are proficient with Blueprint, then they understand the core principles of programming at a fundamental level. At that point, they actually could sit down and talk to a programmer, talk about what they're doing in Blueprint. And the programmer, in most cases, is going to nod and be like, okay, I see what you're doing. Quietly under their breath, the programmer will be like, that's like two lines of code. But that's not important. Uh, so. Uh, once, once uh, students are to that point with Blueprint, however, uh, UE4 then provide, provides a nice path for them to transition over into C++, which is uh, kind of the de facto language of hardcore game development. And across st uh, schools, training events, professional studios, we've seen Blueprint be the source of those aha moments 
uh, as people get into programming. Actually, again, I'm not an engineer. I have dabbled a little bit in code, and the only reason I'm able to do that at all is because I got used to how Blueprint worked. And from there, I was able to open up the occasional class in the source code, because in UE4, we give you the entire source code. But knowing how my blueprints worked, I could look at that source code and see what was going on and make my own changes. So you get kind of a natural transition. But uh, at the end of the day, it's important to note that you may not have to make this, loop, uh, this leap. Uh, in many cases, you can teach a lot. You can teach folks a lot of the core principles of programming just by staying entirely in Blueprint. You don't necessarily have to go into another language if you don't really want to. Now, uh, it is important to know the difference between C++ and Blueprint. So at a, kind of the, on the more technical side of things, uh, Blueprint does live on its own VM layer. Uh, again, it's, it's the same one that we used for Unreal Script back in the day. Uh, it's approximately 7 to 10 times slower than native C++. Uh, that's worth knowing uh, when you're teaching Blueprint to people, but still, 7 to 10 times slower than native C++ is still lightning fast. Uh, it does mean that CPU-heavy operations, so if you're doing something on every single frame of a program or of a game, those should probably be at some point uh, moved over to native code, but that gives you a nice avenue to start teaching your students about program performance and how long it takes to execute certain things. So UE4 does include deep CPU profiling tools to tell you how long each part of your blueprint is executing. So you can, uh, you can run the CPU profiler and you can go node by node and see how long each node in a blueprint chain is taking to execute on your program. So uh, blueprints, also uh, any C++ class uh, that exists inside the engine can be exposed out to blueprints. Uh, I'm actually surprised sometimes, I, I spend most of my time actually traveling to uh, studios helping other companies use Unreal Engine 4 to ship their games. And there's a lot of folks who have no idea about this aspect of it. Anything inside the engine can be uh, surfaced up to Blueprint so that uh, Blueprint artists can make use of it. And being able to do that, in fact, real quick, as a, as a quick aside, that's how I shipped code in Paragon. I needed to hook up a visual effect to one thing. All I did was take that, uh, the, the event of that thing happening inside of C++, I surfaced it up to Blueprint and started hooking things up. I broke the build because I did it wrong. <laughs> but we fixed it. I was, I was still right. <laughs> I promise. So uh, Blueprints also, they don't replace C++, uh, and it's important to keep this in mind uh, when using Unreal Engine 4. It's not really a hard choice between I'm going to use Blueprint to do my thing, or I'm going to use C++. It actually is a, it's kind of like choosing the right tool for the right job. Uh, when you're writing native C++ classes, you rarely ever, in fact, never can get away with it, you uh, want to make things like hard references to assets. So you want to create, uh, eventually get your, your students to a point where they're creating their fundamental uh, classes, <coughs> their fundamental layers of a program inside of C++, then exposing hooks to the things that need to change in their games over to Blueprint so that artists can make those transitions, which is how we use the tool at Epic. And there's rules too, things, or things that you can get away without that you should know uh, when you're building uh, high performance programs, anything that is CPU intensive, uh, if you understand how tick works, anything that's running on every single frame of the game, you should try to do that in C++ whenever possible. But it's, the, the nice thing about Blueprint is that it takes away these types of concerns at first, because if you bombard students with, here's all the things you can do, here's how class hierarchies work, here's how type systems work, also be aware of performance, you start to scare people away. So you don't have to stress this at first, but over time, you'll find that Blueprint gives you a nice avenue to slowly bring in more and more concepts. So we have some learning resources to help you learn more about it. Uh, we have full documentation you might have checked out. We have a lot of training videos on youtube.com forward slash Unreal Engine. I'm even on a couple of them, and I'm really sorry about that. Uh, we have a thriving learning community. Be sure to check out our answers.unrealengine.com site and, uh, and our forums. And if you have questions or if you ever need help as to how to get this stuff in your classroom and how to get your students working with this, please reach out to us. Uh, you all know Lewis at this point. Please use him as a resource. Thank you all very much for your time.